That's what yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I'm out here October 6th at uh, noon at City Hall with N.A. Poe and Steve Miller Miller and a bunch of folks who came out to be a part of the family reunion of Occupy Philly. And uh, so you organized this event uh, with the Panic Hour. Yeah. When did that uh, all happen? Well, we were smoking marijuana in my house and uh, we were like, oh shit, Occupy Philly reunion is coming up. We should throw a little event together and see who comes down because Panic Hour is very grateful for Occupy Philadelphia. We met tons of people at the Libertarian Warming Station. We met all different types of uh, activists and we continue to work with them to this day. So we want to celebrate the idea that it's been two years since we came down here. You know, Derek, the night that I came down here and set up my tent, there was these like militant drums and there was just this like spirit in the air. And I remember I had like goosebumps, you know? It was just like, wow, this is like, you know, and then after a few days, I had other bumps all over my body from, uh, you know, MRSA from people that uh, were, you know, occupying. But when I when I came to Occupy, I thought capitalism was the problem. And then at Occupy, I learned that capitalism's not the problem. Shape-shifting humanoid reptilians that control all the world's power institutions are the problem. That's what I learned, PNN. And it's that kind of clarity that we got from Occupy Philly that's led us to being to be being able to be effective activists out in you know the world and not only that but like we at occupy we were able to get ourselves an intern who personally witnessed shape-shifting in a hotel lobby yeah we had kyle any video of that no no nah, never, there's never <laughs> it's one of those hotels that does, doesn't have cameras i guess yeah there's never any video of that but we're just happy for everyone to get together there's not a lot of people here which i think honestly is is because the occupy movement slowed down because people didn't know how to get along. And I see it even in our marijuana work, we're always kind of like fighting back and forth. So activists are hard people to get along with. We're glad that some people have a sense of humor and decided to come out and hang out with us. I think Steve's gonna be doing five minutes of just Occu jokes at some point. Occu jokes. Steve oh, Occu jokes, Occu Derek. Yeah. yeah. We did a comedy show. It was the night we were voting on the eviction. Uh, if we were gonna stay there or whatever, and we had scheduled a comedy show. And they got very, very mad at us doing this comedy show. And then we did the comedy show at 1 a.m. to like homeless people. Steve was almost attacked on stage. But I was nearly, guy. I was nearly attacked because I told a homeless man that I'd give him two dollars to go away, <laughs> and he demanded immediate payment of his two dollars and was oblivious of the fact that I meant I will give you two future dollars to go away now. See, I didn't make the terms clear immediately. And that's one thing I learned from Occupy, is how to negotiate contracts with homeless people with schizophrenia. So I was here at Occupy Philadelphia. I was living in New Hampshire at the time, but I came down the day before the police ransacked the tents because I had heard word that they were about to do that. Yeah. So I interviewed the cops and asked them, is that something you're going to do? Are you going to knock down people's tents and uh, tell them to go home and, and violate their uh, property rights uh, on a, in a public place? And they said, no, no, of course not. Right. We're not going to do that. But then they did, less than 24 hours later. Can you speak to that? Well, we were here that night. It was a crazy night. You know, the cops were lined up all in the street. Uh, the city actually felt like free and like alive. And then it got very childish before marching here and marching there but you know the cops came i mean like let's think about it what were we going to do live here for fucking three years it's, it's it's city hall you know occupy was to make a statement um they got killed in the press it got killed in the media but here we are today you know fighting the federal government at city hall and we wouldn't be able to do that if we didn't learn such uh tactics at at occupy philly so i for one and grateful. I just think I just think it's sad that the cops said they were going to do something and then didn't do it. Could you imagine if politicians did that? If they said they were going to do something and then did the opposite? Jesus Christ, that'd be awful. <laughs> Not to mention that they were coordinated. Those those uh, raids were coordinated by a bunch of different mayors in a bunch of different cities, and they all happened on the same day, and they wiped it out. So, and here in Philadelphia, the head coordinated all that with the DHS was Chief Charles. Mann. with all the other police departments, major cities, places like Oak. I mean, that's, you know, we didn't know, like, Oakland? Seriously? Here's a serious gas canister. Thanks. Yeah, we didn't deal with the violence the no. way that they did, really, but, you know, it was fun. Now they're going to have an ice rink, and we will be occupying this ice rink, Derek, at some point, buying tickets and, uh, and never leaving the ice. Okay, well, thanks a lot for uh, this interview. If anything uh, changes in the next couple of minutes, I'll come by and ask you for a few more words. Thanks again. Yeah, I thank might you, move Derek. to Organize City by then. <laughs> thank you.